that we have a transparent process and uh, review to make sure this doesn't happen again. I think Catherine Garcia is a very good sanitation commissioner. I think she's done a very good job in the past. Yesterday, something happened which shouldn't have happened, and we want to get to the bottom of what that is to make sure it doesn't happen again over the course of this winter season. Okay, I'm happy to take questions. Andy. The past storm, the mayor has been out front the day before, don't drive if you don't have to drive, please stay home, work from home. There was none of that this time. Was he too complacent about this weather? I don't think anyone realized what was actually going to happen. So the forecast did change a little bit. It was up during the course of the afternoon. But yes, I mean, you're right. Typically, the mayor gets out there and tells people stay off the roads, has all the different agencies there to make sure that the public is watching and are getting updated information. That didn't happen yesterday. And I think we have to understand why that didn't happen. Uh, and I assume that the next time there's a storm coming, it will happen. Is there any also, though, the mayor You prepare for the worst and you hope for the best. You have to understand and maybe we need to have a multi-agency review that looks at the, the radar and the satellite forecasting uh, and modeling on it. Uh, and we have to bring all these agencies together because not every storm is the same, not every forecast is correct, but you have to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And yesterday there were things which showed that there wasn't the appropriate amount of preparation. I mean, Upper Manhattan and the Bronx were hit really, really, really bad. I mean, the Bronx was a disaster. So was Upper Manhattan from Harlem all the way up to Inwood. But similarly, it was bad getting to Brooklyn. It was bad in Lower Manhattan. It wasn't as bad as it was up there. So I don't think it was just the issue of the George Washington Bridge having the 20 car pile up and the Major Deegan being shut down. I mean, that contributed and exacerbated the problem up in the Bronx, but you had similar problems in Brooklyn and in lower Manhattan and in Queens uh, and even on Staten Island. So you need to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Okay, Corey, I have a question for you. We are being inundated. I'll come back. We are being inundated with people, from parents, tweets from parents, from teachers saying, kids, some kids didn't get home on the bus until after midnight. The drivers then got back home after 2 a.m. and had to turn around and bring the kids back to school today. Do you think that schools should have been closed because parents shouldn't have to put their kids on buses where drivers were sleep deprived and teachers were also getting home late and were also sleep deprived? Well, I want to look and see the exact number of students and the exact number of delays. The council had a hearing about a month ago on school bus, de on school bus delays uh, and one of the bills that we're contemplating is putting GPS trackers on these buses that parents would have access to to understand exactly where their children are when they're coming home from school. I mean, I think the incident yesterday shows the real need for that. The, the question on closing school, again, I can't make that judgment until I know how many of those young people were delayed, those children were delayed getting home, because closing school is a, is a big undertaking that affects over a million children and their families and all the teachers and principals and assistant principals. So I, I don't have enough information to give an informed uh, answer on that right now. That the, just you know, moving on from school, do you think that the mayor should have been more proactive? I mean, you had, you know, in the past, the mayor has, you know, gone out there and issued warnings. And even when the, the forecast changed, it changed in midday. Should he have then said to people, shelter in place, don't put your cars on the road, this is not going to be a good thing? Should he have done something to prevent, which is really Carmageddon? I mean, uh, uh, Andrew asked, and I, and I, I think he it goes to what he said, which is in the past, uh, whether it is before a snowstorm or after the Chelsea bombing, which happened in my district, you need to overly communicate with the public. You need to communicate ahead of time and throughout the storm. The mayor has done that in the past. Uh, I think the reason why it didn't happen yesterday is because they didn't think it was going to be a rough storm. Uh, but clearly, 
it was, and we have to prepare for that. So I think now moving forward, you need to overly communicate each and every time, even if it's not going to be that bad. Well, I, this is why we need a full operational review, and it's why the council is going to use its full oversight authority, because I think in less than 24 hours, and we're not going to, and we haven't gotten all the answers on all these really important questions. When did the salt spreaders go out? When did the sanders go out? What time were they deployed? Where were they being deployed from? I know there were issues that when things got really bad in Upper Manhattan and in the Bronx, a lot of the trucks and equipment got stranded and they actually couldn't get on the roads with the Major Deegan shut down and with the RFK bridge backed up. Our, the RFK bridge was backed up, uh, Tribar was backed up until three o'clock in the morning. People couldn't get past it. And so these are the questions that we need to uh, answer. And I know the mayor's having a press availability later today, which uh, hopefully he'll be able to shed more light. We're going to indict the mayor, though, on this. And, and I'm not defending the mayor on this, but then don't we indict all of the weather forecasters also? And we indict ourselves. We didn't, we didn't say you're going to six inches of snow. Nobody said that. I'm a meteorology fan and geek, but it's a good job to have because you don't get in trouble when you're wrong. Uh, and clearly it affects the decision-making process of people in government who need to make these decisions based on the health and safety of uh, New Yorkers. Uh, I, I think in the past, the mayor has overly communicated, which is a good thing, with Commissioner Garcia and Commissioner Esposito and Commissioner O'Neill uh, with, with him there, uh, with, there with him. Uh, and I think that should have happened this time. Juliet? Does it take, in your estimation, too long for, let's say, the Department of Sanitation or any other agency to readjust to something that's changing pretty quickly? You know, it's like driving the bus and trying to make the turn, and, you know, it takes a long time. And what can be done to improve that response? These are the questions that we want to get answers to, but let me just say this. We got, I think, six or seven inches of snow as it was measured in Central Park, which was a, a record. I saw... Uh, Andy Newman from the New York Times tweet out that it's like a hundred year record of the amount of snow that was out there. But it was still only six inches of snow. So we're, we're New York City, we get blizzards, we get 12 inches, 14 inches, 18 inches, two feet of snow. We should have been prepared to deal with six inches of snow even if it was a record. And that's why we want specific answers to the deployments, what time the salt spreaders went out, where they were being sent from, uh, and the preparation that was done. And the council, I think as we have over the last uh, 11 months in my time as speaker, we are gonna use that oversight authority and we're gonna do it pretty quickly. Do you think that the DOS has been cutting back on shifts or cutting back in any way on the I, methodology and how they're handling this? I don't have any uh, information on that. I actually do, I had a, I'm not remembering it specifically, so you should ask the mayor and Commissioner Garcia later, but she was telling me yesterday that a lot of the folks that had to uh, stay on were people that were already had overtime or there was some personnel issue where they were not cutting back. They actually were using people that had already had a lot of hours on. Jill? Corey, can you tell us, um, you, you know, the mayor last month announced that Catherine Garcia was going to take on a second role as the city's lead paint czar. Do you have any concerns that perhaps she's a little spread thin, you know, that she should be focusing only on the sanitation department? I liked how you used the metaphor spread. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, so I really, really think Car Catherine Garcia is fantastic. I think she's been a great commissioner and has done a great job. So when I saw that she was appointed to this very important position on lead, I thought that's a very talented person. I have similar uh, positive feelings about Lorraine Grillo, who has done a great job at the School Construction Authority, but was also given the task of leading DDC, uh, the Department of Design and Construction. Uh, and I think that two roles and positions that are that are that major uh, potentially is something that um, could be distracting. Uh, you want to run a city agency like sanitation, which has the daily obligations of picking up the trash in New York City and during the winter months plowing the streets and making sure the city's prepared effectively. And Lorraine is doing a great job at SCA, but DDC has billions of dollars worth of projects all over the city. So I think there are other talented people out there, um, and we should probably 
ensure, and it's going to be part of our questioning, of who are the operational folks that are still there with day-to-day -day, uh, executive experience in these agencies. Is Katie? There, yeah. In New Jersey, the elected officials there are being really contrite in, in what happened and they're apologizing. I mean, do you think, especially top down, that the mayor, I know on the radio, he didn't really seem apologetic. He said that, well, I was stuck in it too. Do you think that he really owes an apology to the people here in the city and elsewhere who traveled in and out? I apologized. Does the mayor, that's kind of my question, does the mayor have an apology problem? I apologized. <laughs> I'm not going to tell the mayor how to talk and how to communicate. I think he, in the past, he has overly communicated, which has been effective in advance of snowstorms. I apologize to New Yorkers who got stuck in traffic, and if the city wasn't prepared, I'm sorry, and we're going to do our job as a council in exerting our oversight to make sure that hopefully this doesn't happen again. I don't run the Department of Sanitation, uh, but we have oversight authority, which we will use. Do you think he was focused too much on his planned trip to D.C. where he was speaking at some forum? I have no idea. Why are you other agencies here uh, that apparently weren't prepared? The MTA didn't have chains on their buses. Uh, the George Washington Bridge is a Port Authority bridge. Um, what's your communication been like with those other agencies that are controlled at the state level, and how culpable do you think they were in what unfolded? I've only been in touch with the mayor and the sanitation commissioner. I haven't been in touch with the MTA or any other levels of government. I've been in touch with my colleagues on the council who were apoplectic last night. Vanessa Gibson was in traffic for nine hours. Uh, Fernando Cabrera was in traffic for five hours. Diana Ayala was in traffic for four hours. Andy King was in traffic for four hours. So the folks from Upper Manhattan and the Bronx, it took them somewhere between four and nine hours uh, to get home, which is, I think, emblematic of what many New Yorkers who live in Upper Manhattan and the Bronx were experiencing. Chaim Deutsch was coming from Lower Manhattan back to Southern Brooklyn, and it took him, I believe, four and a half hours to get home. So it wasn't just Upper Manhattan and the Bronx. It affected Lower Manhattan uh, Queens, uh, Staten Island, and Brooklyn as well. I would say that, you know, there wasn't the best response, it seemed like, in New Jersey either uh, on the preparation and what happened there. Clearly, uh, something happened on the George Washington Bridge, which is why we want to look and understand what time it happened, what preparation was done before that, how were the uh, MTA police involved, how were the operational folks involved with clearing the bridge there and, and desalting the bridge there, how were they involved, de-icing the bridge, how were they involved? These are all questions uh, that we need to get to. Corey, how did traffic here affect the region, Westchester, Long Island, New Jersey? How did traffic in the city? How did what New York City did or didn't do affect these other parts of the region? It's hard to know, but what what I think it all had a cascading domino effect on each other. I'm not sure it came from one spot. I mean, clearly when you shut down the George Washington Bridge, which is I think the busiest daily bridge in the United States of America, that is going to have an impact on New Jersey, on Westchester, on Rockland County, on Manhattan, on the Bronx. Uh, and all of the connecting interstates. So, and then the Major Deegan got shut down to one lane. Uh, the Triborough was backed up, I think, for 12 hours where people couldn't get by. So it's hard to pinpoint where exactly that happened. I think what we heard, uh, what I heard, was that they believe that this all started to cascade from the GW, and that's why we need to get answers to understand if that's actually true. And if I could just follow up, you've apologized. Why are you apologizing? Because I'm in a position of leadership. I don't run the Department of Sanitation, but I think it's important that you New Yorkers know that people who are in positions of influence in the city, that, you know, uh, sort of, I, I feel your pain. Um, I don't really feel your pain because I live in Chelsea and I was able to, to get home in a much quicker way than many other people. But it's important to, to say when, you know, you need to do better and also say when you're wrong. In the past, I said I was wrong on the on the Uber bill that we contemplated three years ago. And this summer I said I was wrong on that bill. It's okay to say you're wrong. It's okay to apologize and say you could do better. There's nothing wrong with that. So, Corey, once, once the forecast changed, should the city have done anything different once they knew it was going to be bad? I think, uh, I think, again, I don't have all the exact information, but I think what happened was that by the time it changed, the vehicles, the sanitation vehicles, and then the traffic uh, chokes that ha that occurred, everything was stuck. You weren't able to actually move the vehicles from the Bronx, around the Bronx, because of the traffic that had piled up 
in the Bronx. So it became a catch-22 where you needed to deploy the, the vehicles in another way, but you couldn't because of the traffic on the roads. And again, this is only six inches of snow. Yeah, Juliet? What's the next step if they want to investigate? What will you be doing? Hi, Karen, a neighbor. What will that um, take? We're going to use our oversight authority, and we're going to do it pretty quickly. So I, I can't give you an exact schedule, but um, I think I am being, I think this, I think me saying what I have said in the last 10 minutes, I am being a lot more moderate in my tone than 90% of the members in the city council and the fire that they're breathing today. Uh, and so there are many council members and New Yorkers who want serious answers before we get into the later winter months so that this cannot and should not happen again. The chains should be put on the buses. The MTA is claiming, Jen, correct me if I'm wrong, the MTA is claiming that the chains didn't have anything to do with why the buses were getting uh, stuck, that the, that the tires themselves were fine for the storm that we were in and that they're made for that. They're saying that the reason why uh, the New York City Transit buses were being delayed was because of all the other uh, traffic that had accumulated in the, in the areas where, we, where you were seeing the significant amounts of congestion. But the answer is yes, you prepare for the worst and you hope for the best. Jill. Uh, the, the city school system canceled after school today, but they did it kind of in the middle of the day something that you think should be happening earlier obviously parents now have to kind of scramble to make arrangements this wasn't the situation when they dropped their kids off I mean, there are questions for the Department of Education and the Chancellor last night was parent teacher conference night and there were you know hundreds of thousands of parents who either were stuck at the parent teacher conference because they couldn't get home in the traffic or couldn't get to the parent teacher conference and many of those parents had to have their children with them um, in the school, which delayed them getting home as well. Um, so there's that issue. There's the issue of the school buses themselves and why did it take so long? And then they had to turn around, as Marsha said before, and come back and drive the next morning. And there's the issue of cancellation of after school today. These are all quite, we're gonna have questions for the NYPD. We're gonna have questions for the MTA. We're gonna have questions for DOT, for sanitation, for the Department of Education. When a storm hits, it needs to be, and it always has been in the past, a multi-agency coordinated effort and approach to deal with the issues and be able to understand when you make one decision, how does it affect everything else? So these are the questions that we're going to ask. Can I ask you a question? I got two. One, is this a security risk? Like we just learned that if you shut down the water charge on bridge, the entirety of Manhattan and some of the Bronx comes to a total standstill. Are there like homeland security implications for that? I mean, I'm not a, a expert on that, so I don't want to just to give you an armchair analysis, but I'll say that when Sandy hit and the area that we're standing in right here was underwater over here to 10th Avenue in this part of Chelsea, um, you know, there were you really couldn't get in and out of Manhattan during that time uh, because of what happened with the flooding. And that hopefully taught us some lessons about during a significant uh, event what are our preparations? And I think that needs to be an answer that goes to uh, Commissioner Esposito from the Office of Emergency Management on issues in that vein. And then second, this happened to be an issue that affected a bunch of council members very directly. They were stuck in traffic, partly because they were all driving. I mean, is when we have subway emergencies, we don't necessarily get this kind of outrage from council members. Is this going to get kind of un, uh, like spectacular weight because they happen to be affected compared to other crises in the city, like living in NYCHA, which they don't? That's a great question. Uh, and I think that council members, if you saw what has happened in these NYCHA hearings, council members have been enraged about the conditions. Vanessa Gibson is one of my dear colleagues and friends. She has spent day after day after day over the course of weeks in Claremont Village when there were issues with rats. She herself was there every single day with those tenants. She wasn't bringing media with her. She wasn't tweeting about it. She wasn't, you know, calling the press up. She was there because she cared. So even though you saw some outreach from council members, 
these council members care about their constituents. <laughs> Vanessa has showed that day in and day out. Um, uh, I do think we need less cars. I think uh, we need to have less cars in New York City. That's why I support congestion pricing. If we had less cars on the road yesterday, maybe it would have made a difference. Let me just ask one more question. Why are these council members driving at this subway? Uh, I, I, I take no issue with them. I don't own a car. I've never had my entire life. I've never owned a car. Uh, but I have no issue with them. If you're someone who lives in South Brooklyn or Eastern Queens or the middle of the Bronx, these council members have very busy schedules. Uh, before I was speaker, I had a very busy schedule. And if you need to get around in a certain way, it's actually easier if you're going to, many council members are going to one, two, three, four community meetings a night. You can't do that all the time on mass transit. So I have no issues with council members driving cars. Uh, you know, Margaret Chin is able to walk to work because she lives in lower Manhattan. Uh, I'm able to take the subway two stops because of where I live in Chelsea. Not every council member has uh, that, uh, you know, are able to do that every single day. Any other questions? Thank you. I have no idea. Thank you. Thank Rich? I can't, I can't give a grade until I have more answers, but what I can say is we need to have more answers that need to be transparent, but what I can say is that uh, what happened yesterday is unacceptable. Even if we had got a bad forecast, even if uh, the the weather changed a little bit, we still need to do better. You need to prepare for the, you need to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. And I don't know that that's what happened yesterday. I do think that Catherine Garcia is a very talented leader in government. I've had nothing but great experiences with her, not just on storms, but on sanitation issues generally. So uh, I haven't lost my faith in her, uh, but I think we need to have a transparent process and answer questions.